Hey everyone, so in this lesson we're going to cover layout in Flutter. So um, we're going to be using a widget called Column, and what Column does, it lets us lay out widgets from top to bottom. So let me show you what we're going to be eventually coding. Um, this is the location detail screen of our app. It's called the Tourism Co app, and the location detail screen shows a number of things, and you can tell that we can use this column widget because things are, widgets here are laid out from top to bottom. So there's another widget called row and row lets you lay out stuff from left to right, for example. So, um, but you're pretty much most of the time gonna use this column widget because um, a lot of content on a mobile um, app is all is, uh, is a column style um, layout. So. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover um, implementing three text sections. So text sections let us define the area for, let's say, let's say we want to show summary and then this snippet of text. That's what a text section will be. So let's get coding. Um, so last time we have this, we left off with this uh, home page and we're going to rename it to location detail. So let's do that really quick and name this directory location detail because that's the convention of the code order organization we're going to use. Um, so we have a number of screens and each directory is the name of the screen and then the name of the file, um, the main file that defines that screen is also that name. So let's define that um, and I'm going to now stop my app and restart it. I can't use the hot reload because um, I am uh, changing the file name. So sometimes we can't use hot reload. So while that's starting, let's go over um, column. So I'm gonna render three text sections, but I'm not gonna just display text. I'm gonna display colored boxes. So colored boxes are gonna show us how that content is the, the bounding areas for each piece of content. So. Um, one way we can define a, co a colored box is using a widget in Flutter called container. So container is kind of like the div um, of Flutter. It's a div in HTML is just a bounding area uh, that's flexible. You have different parameters you can define. One of those parameters is color. So I can just say container and to define some color, I can use a property called decoration. So there's different types of decorations. One is a box decoration. It's just a generic way to define a box um, uh, some sort. And I can style that box using the color parameter. So I'm gonna say color, and I'm gonna say colors.red. So this in Dart means um, colors.red. Red is a static member, meaning it, you don't need to instantiate the colors class to refer to it. So that's why you have class name dot and then the value here. So lastly, co uh, container will take a child. So we're gonna say child text and then whatever. And then we're gonna save it. Um, and one thing we didn't do is define our column, forgot to do that. So column has a parameter called children and children is an, it's a list. It's not a single uh, widget. So, um, and it is a list because you can have multiple um, items in your list. So we're gonna define three containers here. Uh, so I'm gonna just copy and paste this and one's gonna be red one's gonna have a background of green, and one gonna, is gonna have a background of blue. Now nothing's happening here um, because we want to define some parameters here. Uh, I can define some text, that's fine. I'll just do that real quick. But you know, look at the screen. I mean, it, nothing really is happening that's interesting. It's just defining these little tiny boxes here. Um, you can't even see the text. Uh, so what, what I wanna do is define something called uh, main axis alignment. And what main axis alignment does is it lets us control how each child is um, vertically uh, spaced on the screen or how it's laid out. And when I say vertically, um, for column, it's vertically. So um, main axis is something generic. So I'll take a step back. So main axis is the main axis of the widget that you're using. So if you're using a column, the main axis will be a vertical line on the screen from top to bottom. 
if you're using the row widgets, the main axis will be a horizontal line from left to right. So the main axis says something that's loosely defined um, and it depends on the widget that you're using. So, so the main axis alignment controls how content is laid out on from top to bottom. I have the following options. I have um, space evenly. So let's try that. Uh, I'll just go ahead. And you'll see that the each box is spaced evenly on the screen. Pretty simple. Uh, I can also say, let's say end. So if I say end, each item will be rendered from the very bottom of my column. And column occupies the entire screen. There's other options I don't need to uh, cover right now, but the most common one is start. So we're gonna stick to that. The second parameter for column or row, we're not gonna cover row in this video, but um, it's also a parameter for row, is cross axis alignment. And cross axis alignment is the exact uh, opposite of the main axis. It's the uh, kind of the uh, kind of uh, um, virtual horizontal line on the screen. So if the main axis goes from top to bottom, the cross axis goes from left to right on the screen. And let me show you what options you have here. So I have cross axis, axis alignment, baseline, center, and start stretch. So we're not going to cover all of these, but one of the most common ones is stretch. So it's making sure that each item of my column is stretched from left to right. So let's save that and I'll show you now each item is stretched from left to right. Um, and cool, um, that's it. So this code looks pretty ugly, but at least we have some containers where we can store text. So once we do continue on implementing this screen, we'll have a nice bounding area and uh, content will flow nicely from top to bottom and it'll also be stretched. So let's clean up the code. That's the last step of this video. And since these are um, reusable kind of um, pieces of code here, we're gonna make this into a widget. So I'm gonna uh, take the template of this file, like all the import, the class here, the build method, and I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna create a new file called text section. So the reason why we're defining the file here in the location detail screen is because we're not going to reuse this widget we're going to define anywhere else in the app. So we can keep it local to this screen. So we're going to paste this in and we have a nice template for our stateless widget we're going to build, which is defining a text section. We're going to rename it like that. Um, and then in the location detail screen, I can copy um, or cut the content we want to show and I'm gonna say container, and I'm gonna say return here. And now we can just update this. So we can say text section, and we can define, let's say, let's say three of these. It, later it's gonna be dynamic based on the types of text sections that we have. But for now, um, we'll just define a finite list, and we're gonna say import text section, cool. So this defines three red boxes, pretty useless. So what we wanna be able to do is for now, customize the background color, even though we're not gonna use it in our final screen, this background color property, I just wanna show you how you can define uh, parameters. So how to parameterize a stateless widget or really any widget. So if we wanna pass in a color, First off, I define a private member. Um, private meaning it shouldn't be accessed outside of this widget. It's just something that uh, this widget should know about. And to do that, I say the type of member it is, which is a color, and I have an underscore for the name of the um, member because that underscore means uh, that it's gonna be private. Uh, so I'm gonna say color. And to customize it, I'm gonna create a custom constructor. So a constructor lets me customize how I instantiate this class. So I'm gonna say text section, because that's the name of the class. This is how you define a constructor. And well, what I could do is there's there's two types of parameters for um, constructors. There's, in, in Dart, there's optional parameters and there's named parameters. So, um, uh, uh, optional named ones and positional, sorry. So 
we're going to find to keep it simple positional parameters meaning if i say color here um you know we all will basically how we use it is in location detail i'm going to just say colors red colors green and colors dot blue and it's positional meaning uh based on the you know, this is the first argument. Um, it knows that it's going to associate it with this parameter, simple. And then I can say this dot underscore color equals color. So this means um, it's kind of like the same thing in JavaScript where this means it's referring to the instance of this class. So I'm going to say this underscore color, and it's going to give me the value of that parameter. It's going to assign it to this. So in Dart, there's a shortcut to this, um, this per positional parameter. And I don't have to define the um, method body here. I can just say um, this dot underscore color. And what that does is for a positional parameter, it's gonna take that value and it's just gonna automatically make an assignment to the member here, this value. So whatever I pass in as the first argument here, it's gonna assign immediately to this dot color. So that's pretty cool. So finally, we're going to refer to our member here. So it's customized. We're going to hit save. And let's see what happens here. Um, cool, it worked. Um, what else uh, we want to cover? Yeah, that's position parameter. I mean, the last thing that you should do is um, say that this private member is final. And what final means is that once you set it, you can't change it. And that's really nice because it makes anyone reading the code know that they shouldn't change it. They can't because the compiler will give you an error. And we don't need to change it after that assignment's been made. So I just say final here, and that's just like a best practice. So that's it. Um, later, we're going to add some real text. We're going to style it. Um, we're going to see now how the, the, the layout is, is defining um, how the text is constrained. But for now, um, it's pretty simple. And I hope you have a good idea of main axis alignment, cross axis alignment. And um, if you want to do like some bonus work, change this to a row and try that out um, or play it with the different uh, options you have here. So let's continue on.